Welcome back guys. In this video, we're gonna derive the curvilinear kinematic equation. As I said guys previously, they are all based on these two equations. A is equal to dv over dt and that v is equal to ds over dt, right? So how to prove this equation this is the first one in this equation. Now, of course, guys, the first equation is obvious. How can I find this? How can I find the equation of A in terms of S? I know, guys, that A is equal to dV over dt. And I know that V is equal to dS over dt. So if I replace V here by dS over dt, I'm going to have this. So it will be d over dt of what? of d s over d t and this of course will be equal to d squared s over d t so where guys i can use uh, this equation in fact if i have the equation of s as a function of time and the question is not to find v it is in fact to find a right so i can find a directly by doing the, the, the second derivative of s and there is no need to find v here anymore. Now what about this second equation? I want you guys to take two minutes and think about it. How can I prove this equation? How can I prove that a is equal to v dv over ds or in other words guys you can find this in the textbook as a ds is equal to v dv and why and when should I use such equation? Take two minutes guys, think about it. In fact guys, I know that a is equal to dv over dt. So I know that a is equal to dv over dt. And I know guys that v is equal to ds over dt. So let's find out what is dt here in terms of v and ds. dt is equal to what? dt is equal to ds over v. So if I replace this equation here, if I substitute dt by ds over v, then this means, guys, that a will be equal to v dv over ds or that a ds is equal to v dv. Guys, why should I use this equation and when? In what problems I should use this equation? In fact, guys, if you take a look to this equation, you're going to find that this equation is missing the parameter t. So I don't have any t here. It's independent of time. And this means, guys, if the problem, for example, is to find the acceleration, knowing v in terms of s, so if I know the equation of v in terms of s and not in terms of t, I can find A using this equation here, all right? So I can find A using the equation, the independent equation of time, which is V dV over dS. So guys, in fact, these derivatives or these differential equations are used based on the given. If in the given, guys, I have the equation of S, in terms of time, I can find V, and then I can find A in terms of time. But if I have the equation of V in terms of S, then I should find V dV over dS, and this would be equal to the acceleration. Now, guys, what if I need to find S if I know V with respect to time? Or I need to find V if I know A with respect to time. Or I need 
need to find V if I know A with respect to S. What should I do? In fact, guys, if I have to go in the other direction, which means, let's say, I need to find S if I know V with respect to time, I should, of course, do the integration. Of course, guys, if I know V with respect to time, then S will be the integration of V dt. If I know A with respect to time, then V will be the integration of A dt. And if I know A with respect to S and not with respect to time, then V dv will be the integration of A dS. And don't forget, guys, in this case, if I know that S is the integration of V dt, from this equation, so V is equal to dS over dt, and I know the equation of V with respect to dt, then V dt is equal to dS. Don't forget that if I want to do the integration of both sides, there will be a constant here, all right? So there will be a constant here. This constant could vanish if I put the boundaries of this integration. So guys, in order to get rid of this constant, don't forget to put the boundaries of these two integrations. For example, here, dt, so let's say I am between t0 and any time t, and this is between s0 and any time s, all right? So guys, this will give me this equation. S minus S0 will be equal to the integration of V dt between T and, or between T0 and T. And of course I can do it because I'm saying that I know the equation of V with respect to that. And guys, please pay attention to the boundaries. Don't be confused, guys. This S0 should be at this T0, and this S should be at this T. All right, guys? So if you have to put the boundaries or you have to do the integration, these boundaries should be corresponding, all right? So S0 should correspond to T0, and S should, co should correspond to T. The lower limit should correspond to each other, and the upper limit should correspond to each other. Let's take another equation. What if I know A with respect to time, and I need to find V? Of course, guys, DV will be equal to A dt. If I want to find V, I should do the integration. And in order to get rid from the constant, I should put boundaries. But make sure, guys, that since here this is dt, the boundaries should be in time. Since this is t0, then this will be the corresponding velocity to t0. So this will be v0. And since this is t, then this should be v. And this means, guys, that v minus v0 will be equal to the integration of a dt between t0 and t. Now, the last equation is this one that we have proven in the previous video. All right? Now, how to find v if I know a in terms of ds? Of course, this means that a ds will be equal to v dv, and then I should put integration on both sides. And don't forget, guys, since this difference, this integration is uh, with respect to ds, then I should put the boundaries here in s. And since this integration is with respect to dv, then I should put the boundaries in v. Now, what you have to know, guys, and to make sure you do it, is that if this is S0, then this should be V0. What does this mean? V0 is the velocity of the particle when it, when it has S0, right? And if this is S, then this V, this is the velocity of the particle when its position is S, all right? So this means, of course, that uh, 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 the integration of V dV between V0 uh, and V is equal to the integration of ADS between S0 and S. And since I know, guys, the equation of A in terms of S, I can do this uh, integration. What about this one, guys? How to do this integration? 
V dV. What will be the integration of V dV between V0 and V? It is V squared over 2 between V0 and V. That's it. Right? So V squared over 2 between V0 and V, which means it is V squared minus V0 squared over 2, and this will be equal to the integration of ADS between S0 and S. That's it. Now, guys, in most cases, in most cases, T0 will be the initial time, which is 0. All right? So I start from T is equal to 0. But make sure, guys, that in these cases, V0 will be the initial velocity. So it is the velocity at T is equal to 0. And S0 will be the position at T is equal to 0. Thank you.